Een speciale gast in de studio. Mogen wij het even horen voor Paul Young? Well, it's good to see you back uh, in the spotlights now. Nice to be back. Should we, should we uh, speak about a comeback? Shall I, can I call it a comeback or not? How do you see it yourself? Uh, no, it's not a comeback really. It's just that the album took a long time. Yeah, but exactly what have you been doing except for well, having your hair grow a lot longer? Yeah. You've been um, busy for it? Well, you've been away for three years. Yeah. Well, uh, um, we did a, a very long tour after the last album. And then I did take some time off at home. Um, and then we started work on the album in um, 88, but um, I changed my mind halfway through, so we started again. And so time got, became longer and longer. So you, you changed your mind about what? Uh, uh, the songs just or the style of the music, yeah, and the way we were recording. It didn't feel right. Does it take long to decide a decision, you know, to, to, to go on to a decision like that? To so suddenly say, well, okay, we'll quit? I mean, there yeah. must have been days and days of work. Yeah, because or months maybe. But always in the past, I start to record and then it and then things start to change. But I like it and mm -hmm. and I think well we'll let this thing evolve. And so this time I thought well I'm not sure but we'll let this thing evolve. And uh, but it kept going the wrong way and I didn't feel comfortable. It was too machine like and I wanted to get some real players. Uh, because uh, basically we were all afraid you had. Again, some, some throat problems. You had some throat problems in 84, I understand? Yeah, that was the last time. That was the last time you had that? Yeah. Because uh, I heard that uh, in 87, together with the Genesis on tour, you also had some problems, but that's not true. Just towards the end, on the very last shows in Wembley, uh, I, I caught the inevitable flu, and it happened to be at a time when we were on, we, uh, the show went out live on radio, so it didn't sound very good, I must admit. But... Um, That wasn't a voice problem, that was just a uh, bronchitis uh -huh. pr problem. But before that, in 84, you, you had an operation, I understand? No, never had an operation. The only operation I had was for a sinus uh, bl blockage, mm -hmm. which was in um, 80, 87, yeah. Do you have to lead a real careful life, for you know, taking care that nothing happens to your voice or...? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I try to be careful, uh -huh. but sometimes I'm not very good. You scream a lot and yeah, yeah. And just party goes. too much. Okay, now um, I understand in, in those years you, you wrote a lot of material. You have a lot of songs or not? Right now? Um, yeah, um, I wrote some material, uh, some material, and I collected a lot. So um, I've got enough songs ready for the next album mm -hmm. now. Because for your, for your current single, it's not a song you, you wrote yourself. It's, no. it's an existing song. Yeah. Now, you really got slagged off uh, with the uh, Love Will Tear Us <laughs> Apart, you know? People yeah. were really going like, whoa, why did it touch that song? Yeah. Uh, are there songs really sacred songs you can't touch, or, or do you...? To me, yeah, because it, I think if the best performance of the song has been done, then why bother? You mm -hmm. know? I would rather choose a song that did moderately well, or maybe didn't sell, sell very well at all but I really like the song, and then I will do that song. But um, I, generally I stay away from songs that were big hits, but um, Love Will Tear Us Apart was never a big chart success, only in the independent chart. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like I, that I could do a good interpretation. Do you, do you get hurt by things like when people go like that, you know, and, and talk about that? Do you, do you feel bad about it or do you go, oh, no. you know, well, they're just it, critics, who cares? No, it made me want to do it again. <laughs> so, so on the second album, I did a Tom Waits song because I knew that there's also people out there that are very precious about Tom Waits. Um, so I didn't purposely go out to annoy them, but uh, when, no. I, when, when I found the Tom Waits song, I thought, I really like that song, and some people will be quite uh -huh. angry that I've done it. But I really like the song, and, it, and I wanted to do it. How do, you, how do you like uh, going around in a business where, where image often seems more important than music? How, how do you like that? Um, try to ignore it. Um, I just, I don't think about it too much, you know. I think in the end, the only end result is the music, you know. People, people won't be wearing the same thing in five years' time, but they might get your record out and play it again, but they certainly won't get their frilly shirt out and wear it again, you know, so um, 
I think it's more important that the music is right. Uh -huh. Still, when you start right away, when you started off, you had the image of you know a giant sex symbol. So, uh, what, are you comfortable with that? Um, Would you I, rather you know lose it than than have it? I'm I, a, yeah, it must I, satisfy your male, male ego too, you know. Yeah, but then you can't. Then it becomes too precious to you, and so um, I tried not to bother with it too much, you know, because it's it's the same. It's the same thing as a fashion thing, you know, when your looks go out of fashion, then you go out of fashion. Mm. So I, I try not to make too much of that. And not be running around like uh, Zig Zig Sputnik. Uh. What yeah. was that band? Wait. Now, um, another thing. Uh, uh, papers, you were in a lot of papers. Is there a big difference between the Paul Young you see in papers and the real one? Because yeah, you, you yeah. can't go out and there's there's like a camera in front of you. They, they, do they wait outside, outside your house, house or something, or what, what do they do? Um, no, they tend to... I've got quite a good relationship with the press now, and so uh, they tend to um, leave me alone at home. Um, although, you know, if I'm out somewhere, a, a club or something, then, yeah, they'll snap because I'm out at a public place, and that's fair enough. Mm. But do you like that, or because you, you know, rather lose it? Well, I'd like to choose the time that they do it, yeah. Uh -huh. So if I'm out and about during the day and then someone tries to take a picture of me, I find it quite irritating. If I'm out at night, I think that anything goes, really. Well, you could use the Sean Penn method for that matter. And yeah, well, I've been tempted. <laughs> but you never did? No, I never did. Okay, but that could happen. Could Call us, happen. we'll be there with the camera, okay? <laughs> Now, um, we'll see you on stage in a moment with your, yeah. uh, with your new single. Mm -hmm. You once said, I don't think success will last for a long time, I understand, in an interview. Do you, do you still think the same about that? Um, Is it important to you, anyway? It's quite important to me that I stay around, yeah. You know, um, I hope success does last a long time. I don't want to get too famous. And, um, I you think don't want to get too famous? No, I think I've stayed away from that. So I think it was quite good that I, that I had a rest. Um, because when your profile gets so big, you can, it's very easy to burn out. Mm -hmm. If your profile is just a little lower, I think it gives you more of a chance to evolve, change your music, you know. It's done Ro Robert Palmer very well. He's been in the business a very long time. Okay. Softly whispering, I love you. We'll see you on stage. First though, we'd like to know what your favorite video is. Uh, my favorite video is Prince doing Grand Slam with the blindfold. Okay, we'll take a look at that. Thanks Thank for being you. here. See you later. Thank you. Hello. I'm Phil Collins, and you're watching Europe's number one rock show, Countdown. <laughs> 